Well, thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, uh, my name is Jack Spraga. It's my honor to serve as uh, president of Bristol Community College. And uh, while we're talking about community colleges, I want to acknowledge the presence of the president of Cape Cod Community College, John Cox. <laughs> also, I want to uh, talk about uh, or recognize our elected officials. We have uh, Senator Mike Rodericks, Senator Margaret. And we have uh, Representative Alan Sylvia and Representative Paul Schmidt. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. This is a great day for Bristol Community College and for education in general and for workforce development across the Commonwealth. Uh, we're very excited about the news that we're going to learn a little bit later this afternoon. I did want to, of course, uh, acknowledge uh, Congressman Kennedy is here and uh, also Secretary uh, Sullivan and Commissioner Sylvia are all here and uh, you'll be hearing from them shortly. But uh, I wanted to uh, say that uh, uh, this is a very important grant uh, that we're uh, talking about and uh, Cape Cod also, community college also involved uh, as across the Commonwealth, uh, the term workforce development and the term green energy uh, are virtually synonymous now and, uh, and very popular uh, across uh, all of our educational institutions. So it's my pleasure uh, to get us started and get off the stage here. And, uh, and uh, I'm going to introduce Alicia Barton, who is going to uh, uh, explain the purpose of this great gathering. And thank you again for coming. And by the way, I should mention as I leave that at the end of the program, if anyone is interested in a full tour of the building. Uh, please uh, just stay behind and we'll, we'll arrange that for you. So it's now my honor to introduce Alicia Barton. Thank you. Thank you very much, President Sprague. I've, I've, and, and thank you uh, to Bristol Community College very much for hosting us today. I, uh, I am Alicia Barton, President, uh, CEO of the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center. And for those of you that don't know us, the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center is uh, a publicly funded agency that is solely dedicated to growing the clean energy economy here in Massachusetts. So uh, we are uh, thrilled to be here today to talk about one important aspect of the work that we do at Massachusetts Clean Energy Center, which is workforce development. Um, in, in partnering closely with the, with the Patrick administration and, and Secretary Sullivan's office and uh, Commissioner Sylvia's office at the Department of Energy Resources, uh, our, our piece of, of working with those agencies on the clean energy agenda is really to to be a resource to the industry. So we spend a lot of time on the front lines of working with clean energy businesses, and we, we do detailed surveys of the industry each year to try and assess what, what the needs are in the industry by uh, employers who are rapidly growing. And, and we know that uh, this is a very fast growing sector of the economy. And one of the themes that comes back to us again and again is that those companies really are looking for uh, trained and educated workforce. Um, and it's a consistent theme we hear uh, uh, each time we, we talk to those businesses about their needs. Now, that's, that's a good problem to have, but it's one that, that needs to be solved, it needs to be addressed, and that's why we're so thrilled to be here today to announce uh, funding for programs that will really help address that need. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, we have a few speakers here and a great program. I'm going to try and get us kicked off right away and jump in with... Um, Secretary Rick Sullivan, who heads all of the energy and environmental agencies for the Commonwealth, but he also chairs the board of directors of the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center. And in that uh, capacity, he has charged us with constantly trying to uh, think of new ways to meet the needs of this industry. And uh, that's what we're here to talk about today. So Secretary Sullivan. Thanks, Alicia. And it also means I actually get to hand out the checks. So that's probably what everyone's really here for today. Let me just say a couple of things real quick. Uh, first off, thank you to Alicia, who as president and CEO of the Clean Energy Center really has done a great job uh, moving uh, the Clean Energy Center forward, particularly in the area of workforce development uh, and internships and job training. And uh, we know um, right now in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts that there's 5,000 companies doing business across Massachusetts in the field of clean energy. And those 5,000 companies employ some 72,000 people working in the industry. And that last year alone, there was over an 11% increase in the number of those jobs. 
And as Alicia said, one of the uh, one of the things that we need to do as a Commonwealth is invest in the training and the retraining um, of our workforce to match up the skill sets that our students uh, in the um, the workers have to the needs of the industry that is in fact fast growing. And Governor Patrick, uh, back when he first took office, uh, with the help of the legislature here uh, today and with also Senator Menard at the time, uh, passed some really national leading uh, legislation around the creation of the Clean Energy Center and focusing the Commonwealth on establishing uh, a clean energy sector here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And some Five years later, uh, we have done, I think, under their leadership uh, and with their vision and with the governor's uh, commitment, has really grown this industry. Because while we have, as a commonwealth, made very smart decisions on our energy policy, which is good for energy security, it's good for long-term energy pricing, it is certainly good environmental policy, at the end of the day, nobody should forget or not understand that the focus on good clean energy decisions was also an economic development model for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to create jobs. And we have done that. Uh, and it has been successful and I still think, as I said the other day, at an internship program and the CEC has a very aggressive uh, internship program uh, in, in a large number of businesses. In fact, it was oversupplied this year. We will now have that internship program go year round because of the demand. We are growing the workforce here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to meet the needs of employers. And when you walk around here at Bristol Community College, no one is doing it better um, than you are. Um, working with the high schools um, through uh, workforce development and training and retraining, working with the private sector, it's a great partnership meeting the needs of the employers. And that's exactly what Governor Patrick wanted to see happening when he had last year in the budget the commitment to the community colleges to be working closely with industry, developing uh, the employment sector, the employee skills and the skill sets that the employers needed in order to grow Massachusetts economy. Because at the end of the day, Massachusetts economy is built on investing in infrastructure, education, and innovation. And no one does that better than in the field of clean energy. So I am thrilled to be here today. I am thrilled uh, to announce uh, a couple of grants that the Clean Energy Center will be awarding, uh, first and in no particular order. Uh, Northeastern University will be getting a grant for $143,000. Merrimack Valley Workforce Investment Board will be getting a grant for a little over $50,000. Cape Cod Community College will be getting a grant for $144,000. The Boston Private Industrial Council will be getting a grant for $20,000. And here today, and we saw what Bristol Community College will be doing with its money, working again with high school students and the retraining, working in the field of not only wind and solar and renewable, but also energy efficiencies and insulation, all very important parts of the economy and where we're going to head a grant in the amount of $100,000 uh, to Bristol Community College. So congratulations uh, to all of the recipients. I know you will use these dollars very wisely moving forward on our clean energy revolution that is not only sweeping across the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, but make no doubt about it, we are national leaders in the field of clean energy and energy efficiency. In fact, we have been recognized as number one in energy efficiency in the country, and our best days are ahead. And serving as one of our point individuals, um, I know the governor is very pleased and honored uh, that Congressman uh, Kennedy uh, is, has agreed to serve as the chair uh, of the STEM advisory committee uh, to the governor in science, technology, engineering, and math. A very important focus uh, in, the, in the Commonwealth. Again, understanding that these are the jobs that we have for the future, but we need to focus our students and our populations on those particular STEM fields. Uh, and that advisory group to the governor is very important. And we are honored uh, for the leadership of Congressman Kennedy that he brings to so many issues, but certainly into the field of STEM. And it is my great honor to introduce your Congressman, Congressman Joe Kennedy. Uh, Mr. Secretary, thank you uh, very, very much uh, for the extraordinarily kind introduction. Uh, Alicia, uh, very well done uh, this morning and or the, or earlier. The, uh, 
it's an honor for me to be here today with all of you uh, and um, to support some of the efforts that we really have here uh, across Massachusetts from some incredible leaders. Um, and you see that, uh, of course, with the secretary here uh, today. And, and really setting the stage for um, what it means to uh, develop green technology and to make the investments that we need uh, in order to uh, be an economic force uh, for the future. Uh, we just came from uh, a ceremony up at um, uh, Boston Common for the unveiling of co uh, Cool Globes um, and listening to some of the speakers there, uh, making the point that if we want to be um, really leaders of the future in a clean energy field, you have to make that investment today. And that that choice between investment in our environment and protection in our environment and business is a false choice. That good business is protection of the environment and it's clean energy. And uh, I think you've got here um, in Massachusetts some leaders that have that vision and have uh, that dedication to make sure that we're willing to make those investments today. And certainly uh, in the front row, front and center, some uh, incredible leaders that I'm honored to work with as well. So thank you, uh, gentlemen, for, for being here as well. Um, the last thing I'll, I'll say, uh, much of it was uh, already covered by uh, the secretary. Um, but uh, I think it does begin uh, with making these investments that are necessary for the future. It begins with education. It begins with a basic competency, a basic foundation for principles uh, to get those uh, jobs that are going to be available in the future, whether it's through workforce investment, uh, whether it's through some of the weatherization jobs that we just uh, saw in one of the classes, whether it's through clean tech and uh, the development of wind energy. And obviously, the South Coast has tremendous potential here to capture some of these emerging fields and emerging technologies if we have the skilled workforce that is ready to take advantage of those opportunities as they become available. And that starts with programs like workforce investment from uh, BCC. And Mr. President, uh, nobody, as the Secretary said, nobody does it better uh, than you. So uh, I am honored to be here as uh, part of the uh, as the honorary chair of the Governor's STEM Council. Uh, we are supported by a wonderful new executive director as well. Allison, thank you very, very much for being here. Um, and really my hope for um, uh, the evolution of this council is to be a resource for all of you, to try to understand how we can be supportive, how we can be helpful, what it is that business needs, what it is that uh, our communities need in order to make sure that we are making the investments today uh, to fill that skills gap and to make sure that our kids 10, 15, 20 years from now are going to have the skills that they need in order to compete for the jobs in the future. So um, with that, I just want to uh, thank everybody again. Thank you for including me. And Mr. President, congratulations. Thank you, Congressman Kennedy, very much for uh, those remarks and for, for your leadership on this issue. It's uh, very important to have so many partners working on all of these um, tough challenges together. And I did want to just acknowledge a couple other representatives from um, the, uh, the community colleges that are being awarded today. Uh, in addition uh, to the president, we have uh, Fernando Garcia, who is the, the chair of the Board of Trustees here at Bristol Community College. Thank you for being here. And, and, and President John Cox from uh, Cape Cod Community College, who also was awarded under, under this program. Thank you very much for being here. And uh, I do want to just briefly build on uh, the Secretary's thanks to the members of our legislative delegation who are so supportive of uh, uh, nation-leading clean energy policy here in the Commonwealth that helps us make all the tremendous progress we've made in, in addressing our climate goals and, and our economic goals. And I, I, I want to invite uh, Representative Schmidt to the, to the microphone to say a couple of words. Thank you very much. I'm going to be so bold as to speak for uh, my colleagues in the legislature, uh, Senator Rodericks and uh, Representative uh, Sylvia, and I also want to mention uh, New Bedford City Councilor Jim Oliveira, who is right back there. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Jack, for your leadership of BCC, and thank you to the principals of Commonwealth Landing who are willing to take the risk and turn a vacant building into an economic engine. Uh, for Fall River. Uh, Rick, I just wanted to say briefly, people in Fall River like to work. People in Fall River know how to work, and people in Fall River want to work. It's just that 
many of our skills that used to help us in the mills no longer work. And we need the training uh, that you are helping us achieve. And I can guarantee you'll find that people in Fall River will put that money to good use. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Representative. Uh, and, and next, I just want to invite a couple of perspectives from uh, the, those of our partners that are actually doing uh, this hard work day to day and, and educating the next generation of clean energy energy workers. And in particular, I want to welcome Tabitha Hobbs to the microphone. Tabitha is an environmental technology teacher at uh, Southeastern Regional uh, Vocational Technical High School who participated in uh, a program funded under this effort last year and will uh, uh, share her experiences with that. Thank you, Tabitha. Thanks. Thank you Alicia. Um, it's my pleasure to be here. We've been able to do a number of wonderful and exciting things thanks to the funding from workforce capacity um, at Southeastern Regional. Especially thanks to this, our teachers have been able to participate in online sustainability, clean energy courses, and develop partnerships with employers that can come in and be guest speakers or that can host us as field trip sites. And the students that have been able to be involved in this have been from a number of the vocational programs at our school. These include plumbing, electrical, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, environmental, and electrical. <laughs> and the students in these programs have learned everything from solar thermal to geothermal to weatherization. Um, green building practices, and a number of other subjects related to their vocational areas. To implement this curriculum, we've done a lot of really fun and creative projects. These include starting up a bio bus, which was actually an old school bus that's been converted into a traveling classroom that we're taking out into the community to teach about clean energy technologies. And the students were the ones that actually did the work on the bus to convert it, that installed the solar panels, that installed the LED lights, that built and installed a gray water filtration system. And so they get a lot of ownership out of it, really real world, meaningful learning, and they get the skills that they need to support this workforce that needs to be supported. And we also have a really neat, not quite finished yet, but we're working on a sustainability center. And the students, again, installed the systems, the solar thermal, the geothermal, the photovoltaics. This past year, we, were, we had the honor of working with Green Schools and hosting the Green Schools Summit. And the students took this learning and they shared it with other students from other schools. They created models that taught about site design and different types of insulation and their efficiency. And through this, we hope to really take the next step and continue really implementing a number of new and innovative technologies that we're seeing come into the world every day. So it's been an honor and a pleasure to get to utilize the funding to do really great things for the students and give them the training that they need to help us all be successful in creating a greener world. Thank you. Thank you, Tabitha. Uh, next, I want to introduce uh, uh, Janice Batista to come up, and, and, and Janice is recent graduate of Boston Latin High School, and will be starting at Suffolk University this fall through um, uh, a program by the Boston uh, uh, Youth Environmental Network that was funded under workforce capacity grants last year. Uh, Janice was able to uh, complete an internship at a clean energy company, and uh, I'm sure she's excited to get started uh, in her college career this fall with that experience under her belt. And I'd like to introduce Janice to come up and, and, and talk about her experience. Hi, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Janice Bautista, and last summer, not this summer, but last summer, I worked at FastCap. Um, it's a clean energy company, and they make, they're, alter they're trying to make an alternative to clean energy by using with batteries. And uh, in that internship, I learned so many things. 
uh, engineering was a new thing for me, or I, I didn't have much experience, but I learned about engineering, and I learned about clean engineering, and I learned about different things and materials. I learned, I gained skills about um, using lab work, so I learned about um, being diligent in my work. I mean, I'm, I tend to be diligent, but I definitely um, made my experience worthwhile being there because I helped testing testing materials or doing research. And with this experience and working with other people, working with the engineers side by side, I learned about the different experiences that can help uh, me as a student learn what I want to do in the future. I'm not sure if I will do engineering in the future, but a science is definitely a strong point in my view. But the, the experience working at FASCAP over the summer, and I even worked this past spring um, as a side job after school, it helped me uh, definitely learn a lot about the different opportunities that students have. And I was only one of, um, I was called back for the spring, and that doesn't happen a lot to other people. So I thought, I, I mean, from, Compared to the other people who I worked with over the past summer, I thought it was a really nice experience to let me be invited once again. And the just clean energy, I've, I've worked at my school in the club, in my school club, and we've done different initiatives. But I think that um, being out there in the workforce definitely uh, is a big jump into my position as a student and hopefully will be a big advantage in my college and beyond. Thank you, Tabitha and Janice, for, for sharing those perspectives on, on uh, educational opportunities uh, in, in the clean energy sector. One of the other uh, important partners, obviously, in this whole uh, 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 progression of education and uh, uh, learning and training into the workforce is the employers who, who partner in that effort as well. And, and, and much like uh, FastCap, who, who helped uh, Janice uh, get experience, um, there are many other businesses that, that, that that actively partner in these programs to help make sure that the real world lessons and the work that actually needs to get done out there in the day to day is, is, is the type of skills that are being developed under programs like this. So I want to uh, also introduce um, our last speaker who is uh, Misha Glazimitsky. Uh, Misha is back here and uh, he is with um, Monroe Distributing and has uh, partnered here uh, under, uh, 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 pardon me, has partnered here with Bristol Community College under this program. So thank you, Misha. Thanks. Thanks. So um, first of all, I want to say it's a huge privilege and honor for us to be here. Um, we find this to be a really important endeavor. Um, you know, one thing that's interesting from the industry standpoint, I think these types of uh, events are really refreshing for me personally. You know, um, it's a challenging industry. You guys know that. It's ever-changing, and there's a lot of challenges ahead of us. But we're normally, um, on the industry side, always looking forward. And we're looking at the next challenge, what's going to happen next, and how we're going to re-strategize and, and, and get set up for it and get ready for it. But we very rarely stop and look back at what we've done. And uh, it's unbelievable how successful this industry has been in this state. And um, it's obviously for partners like BCC and the Mass CEC, as well as our legislators that are here. Um, they make a huge, huge impact on our industry. And it's been unbelievably positive. In my personal experiences, I've started at Monroe, which is a little bit over three years ago now, our company has doubled in size. We've doubled in revenue. Um, we're using all local labor. So, you know, we're a company that's been here for 70 years, and we've just grown exponentially over the last few years, and that's and thanks to, you know, amazing programs like this. Our interest in this grant really was, uh, was twofold. Number one, the workforce is available here. Um, no one really has any experience in this industry when they first come into it. Uh, those types of people just don't exist. Uh, myself, I had a finance background when I got into this industry, and you can go around our office and ask, you know, what kind of background people had, but no one's like, oh, I have 10 years of experience in solar or 10 years of experience in green energy. It just doesn't exist. And part of the solution of that is training, and that's what I actually do in Monroe. I'm the direct, our director of training, so I do a lot of training programs. But one thing that's interesting, I was talking to Rob a little bit earlier today. I was at an industry training seminar yesterday. It was an all-day training. The person teaching it was extremely, extremely knowledgeable, but they weren't a great educator. And that's what ends up running, run, what I run into on the industry standpoint is we go to a lot of these events and these seminars where it's someone who is either a really great educator but isn't knowledgeable enough or is extremely knowledgeable but not a great educator. And I think that part of the um, goal for us in this and working with both BCC and actually 4 working with 
both our grants is we know we're going to be working with people that are really good educators. Now we're going to get the chance to actually increase their knowledge base so they can actually teach these things on to, you know, the youthful workforce that's actually going to be coming into Massachusetts that we're going to need to tap into as time goes on. So um, I'm going to kind of try to keep it short and sweet, but, you know, we appreciate the opportunity and thank you very much and look forward to working with you. Thank you. So, that, um, so I'm just going to wrap up uh, the program today by again thanking uh, Bristol Community College for for hosting us and congratulating all all of the uh, community colleges and 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 uh, programs that were selected for funding under the Workforce Capacity Grant Program at Mass CEC. Um, you know, there's obviously uh, a lot of excitement as we're heading, uh, wrapping up the summer here and heading into the school year for this new new opportunity again this year to to help uh, uh, many new individuals learn the skills that they need to enter the clean energy workforce. And and I want to uh, just thank everybody for being here, but also to uh, to invite you to keep partnering with us and and hope that uh, you will will continue to work with Mass CEC and with uh, our, our partners at Department of Energy Resources and and the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs to help continue making these programs a success. Thank you.